Hello everyone, Morpheus is with you. Shall we discuss the theory of a flat earth? Let's go. The globe earth lie. Wolves in sheep's clothing have pulled the wool over our eyes. For almost 500 years, the masses have been thoroughly deceived by a cosmic fairy tale of astronomical proportions. We have been taught a falsehood so gigantic and diabolical that it has blinded us from our own experience and common sense, from seeing the world and the universe as they truly are. Through pseudoscience books and programs, mass media and public education, universities and government propaganda, the world has been systematically brainwashed, slowly indoctrinated over centuries into the unquestioning belief of the greatest lie of all time. Children are taught in their geography books, when too young to apprehend or write the meaning of such things, that the world is a great globe revolving around the sun, and the story is repeated continuously, year by year, till they reach maturity, at which time they generally become so absorbed in other matters as to be indifferent as to whether the teaching be true or not, and, as they hear of nobody contradicting it, they presume that it must be the correct thing, if not to believe at least to receive it as a fact. They thus tacitly give their assent to a theory which, if it had first been presented to them at what are called, years of discretion, they would at once have rejected. The consequences of evil teaching, whether in religion or in science, are far more disastrous than is generally supposed, especially in a luxurious laissez-faire age like our own. The intellect becomes weakened and the conscience seared. David Wardlaw Scott, Terra Firma. The Earth not a planet proved from scripture, reason, and fact, 26, for 500 years an elite cabal of sun worshippers has propagated this nihilistic, atheistic cosmology, cosmogony unquestioningly believed by the vast majority of the world. We have been taught, contrary to all common sense and experience, for that the seemingly motionless, flat earth beneath our feet is actually a massive moving ball spinning through space at over 1000 miles per hour, wobbling and tilted 23.5 degrees on its vertical axis, while orbiting the sun at a blinding 67,000 miles per hour, in concert with the entire solar system spiraling 500,000 miles per hour around the Milky Way and careening across the expanding universe away from the Big Bang, at an incredible 670 million miles per hour, but that you feel and experience none of it. We have been taught that a mysterious force called, gravity, a magical magnetism responsible for keeping everything from falling or flying off the spinning ball Earth, is just strong enough to hold people, oceans, and the atmosphere tightly to the surface, but just weak enough to allow bugs, birds and planes to take off with ease. Whilst we sit drinking our cup of tea or coffee the world is supposedly rotating at 1039 miles per hour at the equator whizzing around the sun at 66,500 miles per hour, hurtling towards Lyra at 20,000 miles per hour, revolving around the center of the Milky Way at 500,000 miles per hour and merrily moving at God knows what velocity as a consequence of the Big Bong. And not even a hint of a ripple on the surface of our tea, yet tap the table lightly with your finger and. Neville T. Jones, I remember being taught when a boy that the Earth was a great ball, revolving at a very rapid rate around the sun, and, when I expressed to my teacher my fears that the waters of the oceans would tumble off, I was told that they were prevented from doing so by Newton's great law of gravitation, which kept everything in its proper place. I presume that my countenance must have shown some signs of incredulity, for my teacher immediately added, I can show you a direct proof of this. A man can whirl around his head a pail filled with water without its being spilt, and so, in like manner, can the oceans be carried round the sun without losing a drop. As this illustration was evidently intended to five settle the matter, I then said no more upon the subject. Had such been proposed to me afterwards as a man, I would have answered somewhat as follows. Sir, I beg to say that the illustration you have given of a man whirling a pail of water round his head, and the oceans revolving round the sun, does not in any degree confirm your argument because the water in the two cases is placed under entirely different circumstances, but, to be of any value, the conditions in each case must be the same, which here they are not. The pail is a hollow vessel which holds the water inside it, whereas, according to your teaching, the earth is a ball, with a continuous curvature outside, which, in agreement with the laws of nature, could not retain any water. David Wardlaw Scott, Terra Firma. The earth not a planet proved from scripture, reason, and fact. 
We have been taught that the ball Earth spins at a constant velocity perfectly dragging the atmosphere along so we cannot feel the slightest bit of motion, perturbation, wind, or air resistance. They say we cannot feel any of this motion because the magical velcro of gravity pulls the atmosphere precisely along. And we cannot measure any of this motion because the stars are so incredibly far away that over a hundred million miles of supposed annual orbit around the sun amounts to not a single inch of relative parallax change. How convenient. We have been taught that the apparent orbit of the sun, planets, and stars, but not the moon. Around the earth are all optical illusions. That it is in fact the earth beneath our feet which moves, and our eyes that deceive us. Special exception is made for the moon, however, which is said to revolve around earth just as it appears. Since we only ever see one side of the moon, we have been taught this is because the moon's supposed 10.3 miles per hour west to east rotation combined with its 2288 miles per hour orbit of earth just happens to be the exact motion and speed necessary to perfectly cancel out the earth's supposed 1000 miles per hour east to west rotation and 67000 miles per hour orbit of the sun thereby creating the perpetual dark side of the moon illusion. Oh really? Though the sun and moon appear to be relatively small equal-sized bodies revolving around a stationary earth, we have been taught that this too is an optical illusion, and they are in fact thousands of miles divergent in diameter. They say the sun is actually a whopping 865,374 miles across, 109 times wider than the earth, and, contrary to all experience, experiments, and common sense, that we revolve around it. They say the moon is 2,159 miles across, a quarter the size of the earth, and why they appear the same size is because the moon is only 238,000 miles away, while the sun is an unfathomable 93 million miles away from the earth, and these just happen to be the exact diameters and distances necessary for a viewer from earth to, falsely, perceive them as being the same size. You don't say. A sphere where people on the other side live with their feet above their heads, where rain, snow and hail fall upwards, where trees and crops grow upside down and the sky is lower than the ground. The ancient wonder of the hanging gardens of Babylon dwindle into nothing in comparison to the fields, seas, towns and mountains that pagan philosophers believe to be hanging from the earth without support. Lacantius, on the false wisdom of the philosophers, I confess that I cannot imagine how any human being, in his proper senses, can believe that the sun is stationary when, with his own eyes, he sees it revolving around the heavens, nor how he can believe that the earth, on which he stands, is whirling with the speed of lightning around the sun, when he feels not the slightest motion. David Wardlaw Scott, Terra Firma, 66. We have been taught that those tiny pin pricks of light in the night sky known as planets, or wandering stars, are actually physical, globular, Earth-like habitations millions of miles away. We have even been shown supposed video footage of Seven the one called Mars. We have been taught that the tiny pin pricks of light in the night sky known as the fixed stars, are actually distant suns trillions of miles away each complete with their own solar systems, orbiting moons, and Earth-like planets which potentially harbor alien life. Thank you for attention. Bye.